What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 15.1 after going through four beta stages over the past month. And in addition to this iOS release, we also received iPadOS 15.1, watchOS 8.1, tvOS 15.1, HomePod OS 15.1 and Mac OS Monterey. But in this video, we're gonna be covering everything new in iOS and iPad OS 15.1, including the new changes, the bug fixes, performance, battery life, and whether or not you should update. And if we take a look at the size of this update, you can see here, it came in at 1.44 gigabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro. But of course that size will vary depending on your device and the version you're coming from, but this was coming from 15.0.2. And as far as the build number goes, if we go to our settings general about 15.1, we can see the new build number here is 19B74. And if we scroll down to the modem firmware, you can see that has also been updated to 1.15. 0.02. So if you have any issues relating to the modem, those could be resolved here with 15.1. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 15.1? And the first thing is that SharePlay for FaceTime has returned. So this got pulled in the early beta stages of iOS 15, and this is easily one of the most anticipated features in the software. So now it is back and available to everybody who updates to iOS 15.1. So to take advantage of this, and if you guys don't know, SharePlay basically allows you to share your screen, you're able to watch TV shows, movies, listen to music together with another person in real time. It's very, very cool. It works very well. And I made a whole separate video on this as well. So if you wanna go even further in depth, you could check that video out. It's linked up in the cards and down in the description below. But basically when you're in a FaceTime call, you will see this little button underneath the end button right there. If you tap on that, that allows you to share your screen. You can see you get a little countdown and then you will see a little purple up in your status bar up here in the left when you are sharing your screen. And also if you go into music, if you go to your music application or if you go into like Netflix or Apple TV, you will see this. So you see we have a little button up there that says content will share play automatically. So when I start playing a song right here, it's actually going to play on both devices at the same time. And we're going to be able to, you know, use the queue together. So like if the person that you're on a FaceTime call with decided to change the queue up, they could do that and it would change in real time. So I'll show you how that works right here. So I'm going to move a song on the queue right here and you will see it move in real time right there. And it shows that that person updated the queue. So it works for music. It also works, like I said, in a TV application and any application that uses, you know, or that plays media. So this will work, it's really awesome. And also there is a feature called Smart Volume. So it will lower the volume of media when somebody on the FaceTime call talks, which is really cool. And of course, when you're watching a movie or a TV show, it will pause at the same time, fast forward, all of that at the same time. And then also inside of your FaceTime settings, you have a new section here for SharePlay. And in here you have the kill switch to turn SharePlay on or off. And then you also have the option to start SharePlay automatically on certain applications. So I like having it turned on automatically, but you could turn that off in there if you want to. And speaking of FaceTime, we do also have a minor change inside of the FaceTime settings. You can see we have a new glyph icon for announced calls. Also new in iOS 15.1 is ProRes Video. So ProRes Video has officially been added for the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max. So this is only available for the 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max, no other phone gets the capability to shoot in ProRes video. So you can see when you go to the video section, you will notice this new ProRes button up top where you can turn it on or turn it off. And you can see you get a max time. So obviously just from looking at that, this is a 256 gigabyte device and I can only shoot 4K video in 18 minutes. And that's because ProRes video takes up a ton of storage space. Now keep in mind, if you have a 128 gigabyte iPhone 13 Pro or Pro Max, you can only shoot in up to 1080p. You need a 256 gigabyte device or larger to shoot ProRes in 4K. And if we go into our settings and down to camera and to formats, you will see under video capture, it shows Apple ProRes. So it says that a minute, one minute of 10 bit HDR ProRes video is approximately 1.7 gigabytes for HD and six gigabytes for 4K. So if you're gonna shoot a minute of 4K ProRes video, it's going to take up about six gigabytes of storage, which is crazy. And the difference 
is there. I mean, you can see a difference in ProRes, but you're really only gonna wanna use that if you actually shoot you know, semi-professionally. If you actually are like a cinematographer or you really care about color grading and editing your video, you know, in post, then that will be worth it. But for most people, you're probably not gonna use ProRes too much, but it is pretty cool to still have the, you know, the feature, the capability to shoot ProRes natively on the iPhone. Now also inside of the camera settings, we have another new toggle here in 15.1 and that is auto macro. So you can see at the bottom, it says automatically switch to the ultra wide camera to capture macro photos and videos. So basically what this does is you have the ability now to toggle on or off the little stutter animation when it switches to go into the macro you know mode so that little animation you can turn that off basically it just it doesn't disable the animation it just disables macro mode altogether but now when you get close to something you know it's not going to really ruin your videos so i personally like to have this off just until i actually want to shoot macro shots because especially for video i found that when i'm shooting video that macro could really mess up my video. When I want to get close to something, it does that little, you know, transition and just gets into that macro mode when I did not want it. So I like the fact that we now have the toggle for that. I like to keep mine off unless I know I'm going to shoot in macro mode. So hopefully we get a toggle inside of the camera application. I know it is, you know, pretty clogged up right now, but hopefully we do eventually get some type of toggle in there to turn on or off the macro mode. Now we also have a change in the control center related to the AirPods. So if we go into the control center here and you have to press where the volume slider is when your AirPods are connected, you will see down here, we always had the head tracking, the spatial audio toggle down there. But now at 15.1, if you tap on that, you have the option to change it to fixed or to turn it off. So before it either just turned off or turned on and that was it. But now we have the option to do fixed as well. And also with 15.1, you get lossless audio and spatial audio support for the HomePod and HomePod mini. Just make sure your HomePods are also updated to the latest software version. We also now get the ability to add COVID vaccination cards to the wallet application. So once you add that COVID vaccination into the health application, you will then get the prompt to add it to your wallet. So this is only for specific states so if your state does allow this you will see this feature as of ios 15.1 we also get some new features inside of shortcuts so number one we have a fix for the set wallpaper bugs if you guys follow my dynamic wallpapers you know tutorial where i show you guys how to change your wallpaper every morning at sunrise you know one of the big things that we have one of the big bugs that we had with this was that the wallpaper would not set properly so if that happened to you on previous versions that has been fixed here in ios 15.1 along with the error messages you might receive even though the actual automation ran so if you had the automation right here and it was set up properly you know you would run it and it would give you an error even though the automation would run properly and work you would still get an error message saying that it did not work so that has also been resolved here in 15.1 you should not be seeing that error message anymore and then also inside of shortcuts we have a new overlay text action so if you go ahead into here and you search for an action you can search for overlay text so let me go ahead and type this in overlay text right there so that is a new action inside of shortcuts and you can see here i use that to create a little meme maker so this is a way to you know utilize this new action of course you can do it to watermark images you can make a meme maker so i'll show you guys how this works properly so i just go ahead and type in this right here i'm just typing in something that's just random here we go and you can see it creates the little meme right there so you can have it set up to do that or of course you can watermark images and the cool thing about overlay text is you could also change the font the font size the font color the rotation the outline the stroke all of that you could also change the sizing to be absolute or proportional so really cool i do wish there was an opacity slider right there but maybe we will get that in a future updates but pretty cool and great if you do use the shortcuts application also inside of the translate application we have a new language added so now you will be able to translate chinese so you can see right there we have chinese mandarin and china mainland so that is a new language added to the translate application and then also we have live text available on ipad os 15.1 so for whatever reason live text was not in the initial build of ios 15 for the ipad 
iPad, but now live text is available for you iPad users. And then as far as bug fixes go, we also have a lot of bug fixes here with iOS 15.1. Of course, this is the first major release after iOS 15, so you can expect to see a ton of bugs fixed. So the first one is that the blank widgets would appear after a reboot. So a lot of people after a reboot would just see blank widgets. They would just be, you know, black or white, whatever the case may be. And then they wouldn't reappear until you locked your phone and came back. So that has been resolved with iOS 15.1. Also the storage bugs have been fixed. So the one that Apple mentions is that the photos app might falsely report storage as full when importing photos and video. So that has been fixed. But also for me, at least, if you go into your settings, general, and then iPhone storage, for a lot of people, this would show an inaccurate amount. But for me, that has been resolved here as of the final build of 15.1. We also have some fixes inside of the weather app. So the weather app would sometimes show the wrong temperature right here. And it would also be mismatched between the actual weather app and the widget. It would show two different temperatures that has been resolved here with 15.1. And then also Apple mentions that it might display colors of animated backgrounds incorrectly. So if your animated backgrounds were incorrect, those should be resolved here as well. And then Apple does also mention that, that audio playing from an app might pause when locking the screen. So if you're playing music or if you're playing a YouTube video, if you're playing a, you know, anything that would play in the background normally and you locked your screen and it would stop playing, even though it should keep playing, that has been resolved in 15.1 as well. That happened to me a couple of times, so I'm glad to see that fixed. There's also a fix for the wallet application. So if this unexpectedly quit when using voiceover with multiple passes, that has been resolved here in this update. Also available Wi-Fi networks may not be detected. So this is something that a lot of my viewers, you know, sent in and talked about on Twitter. And if you go into your Wi-Fi right here, for some people, their Wi-Fi network would just simply not show up at all. It would not be detected by their iPhone on iOS 15.0.2, but now with 15.1, it has been resolved and you should see all of your Wi-Fi networks correctly. And then also some good news for iPhone 12 users. So Apple mentions that the battery algorithms have been updated on the iPhone 12 models to better estimate battery capacity over time. So just like Apple did with the iPhone 11 last year, Apple has updated the battery algorithms to better detect the actual battery capacity of the iPhone 12 models, which is huge, especially if you're trying to sell your iPhone, that battery capacity could make or break, you know, how much you make from that phone. So it's good to see that. So basically if you had, maybe you had like an 89% battery capacity before on iOS 15, but now if you update to 15.1, you could see that go, you know, up to 95% or you could see it go down to like 85%. So whatever the case may be, it's going to be more accurate after you update to 15.1. And then of course we do also have some security patches in this update as well, which is always something you should pay close attention to and something that most people should always strongly consider updating for. And as far as any additional bugs, really the only bug I'm still facing has to do with handoff to HomePod and AirPlay to HomePod. It's still very buggy, very laggy. It freezes my music application sometimes and I have to you know, lock my screen and unlock it to fix it and get it unfrozen. So that's really the only issue I'm still facing. Some people are still having an issue where their notifications overlap. So I am not facing that, but some people are still seeing that. Also, some people are still seeing an issue where the Siri voice switches back and forth from the voice that they selected and back to the default voice. It's just kind of back and forth on that. So I am also having that issue from time to time, and it is still not fixed here in 15.1. So hopefully we will see a fix for that sometime soon. But as far as the overall performance goes, performance is great on 15.1. It's actually a nice improvement over iOS 15 through 15.0.2. So there are plenty of bug fixes. The stutter that some people were seeing after unlocking their phone is gone. You know, a lot of those bugs I mentioned earlier have been resolved here in 15.1. So really a nice big point update that fixes a lot of issues. And then as far as the Geekbench scores go, you can see here we score a very respectable 1743 on the single core and a 4869 on the multi-core. So even the Geekbench scores are very strong here with this update. And then as far as battery life goes, battery life has been excellent on the RC build. So I have been running the final build here for a little while now, and the battery life has been excellent. It feels about the same to me as 15.0.2, so there's not gonna be a major difference in battery life. However, if you did have battery drain, that could be fixed here 
with this update, but I would not update expecting to see major improvements in battery because I've not been able to tell a very big difference coming from 15.0.2. All right, so now should you update to iOS 15.1? And I say, absolutely. I mean, SharePlay alone is one of the biggest features in iOS 15 and I think it's worth updating for that alone because your friends are probably going to want to do that with you. You know, if you're into that type of thing, that's definitely something you want to update for. Not to mention, you also have some massive features unlocked with ProRes video and that macro toggle for the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max. So if you have, you know, either of those phones, it's also a must update in my opinion. But even if you don't have one of those phones or even if you don't use FaceTime, I would still update because you get a ton of bug fixes and some additional features that you may use in the future. Now, as far as what's next for Apple, I did also want to touch on this because I would expect to see an iOS 15.2 beta one very soon. Now we could also see an iOS 15.1.1 if there's a major bug or a security vulnerability found, but that would not come you know, until sometime in early to mid November. But I would not expect iOS 15.2 to release until the end of November, possibly the beginning of December. But I would expect to see that first beta roll out pretty soon. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 15.1 and all of the new features and changes included with this update. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Also, let me know in a comment down below what your favorite feature of iOS 15.1 is. And also, of course, make sure you do subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 coverage here on the channel. I update you guys on every single iOS 15 update. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.